John, today the GA has announced its roadmap for how the 2020 Intercounty Football and Hurling Championships will be structured and scheduled. How challenging a task is that considering the time constraints we're dealing with? It's very much a challenge for our CCC, but in fairness to them, they've done great work. To get the blend of all our different competitions together into the time frame that was presented to them has been a huge achievement and they have to be complimented for it. Uh, there's a lot to unpack here. Uh, let's start with the leagues. What's going to happen with the leagues this year? Well, in terms of the hurling leagues, they are at a concluding stage so we're not going to actually play out the quarterfinal semi-finals and final of division 1a but what we are going to do is if Clare and Limerick play against each other we will allow that be the decider for who wins the national league and if they don't come across each other in the championship what we'll actually do is we'll divide the title for this year the division 2a will actually be played off between Kerry and Antrim and in terms of football we're going to play out the last two rounds of the league but there will be no finals it will be straight the top team in each division will be declared the winner of that particular division there will be promotion and relegation and i think it's fair to those teams in division three and four because that's a big key part of their season is the actual national league and getting promoted so i think that's one of the major reasons why we've actually concluded the leagues uh, the championship we're going to have a pure knockout football championship for the first time since 2000 uh, what's the thinking behind that well again time frame was a factor in this and the fact that we saw it being important to finish out the leagues so every team is guaranteed at least three matches and more if they progress so that was felt that they were getting a fair return of a minimum of three games and hurling we're going to have a sort of a limited qualifier system um, in, in so far as if you lose in the province you get at least one other game in, in, a, in, a, in a qualifier structure What's the thing behind that? Again, it was to give every team in the competition more than one game, and uh, that's why we've reverted to that style of an actual competition, because operating the round robin just wouldn't have worked for us in the structure that was in place. The format of the Joe McDonough and Laurie Maher Cups are staying the same, but there's new structures for the ring and racker cups. Yeah, again, but all the teams involved in those competitions will get a second game, so look, it was the time constraints were a key factor in all of that. Uh, we're not losing any competition except for in the club championships there's no provincial or all-ireland series no and we've indicated that at an early stage so that there'll be no disappointment of somebody arriving winning a county title and realizing there's no further road to travel the reason behind this was that in putting the structure together the only window that you might possibly have had would have been in january and february and in terms of player welfare it was felt that that should be a downtime also in the context that the gap between the concluding stages of county championships in September and early October would have caused a problem for clubs in that they would have had to continue to train possibly in October, November and December and that would have been a big cost factor on clubs. So no, we are a bit disappointed that we had to do that but look, in the time frame that we were given something had to give and that's what we are after making the decision in regard to. Uh, at under 20 level the football semi-finals and finals will be completed and uh, an under 20 hurling and also in the minor grades we're going to have straight knockout. Yeah again you know we are restricted by time and the fact that the club have got that initial period of time restricts the inter-county it was important I feel to finish out the under 20 football because we were at all our semi-final stages and that will be passed over in two weeks and then we will have the under 20 hurling championship and also the minor championships but yet again straight knockout. Um, matches are going to be finished on the day, uh, which means two 10 minute periods of extra time required, and at that point, penalties to decide the games. Yeah, if you actually look at it, the time frame is again, as I've said already, so tight, we've no choice but to have a definite result on the day. And it's in the interest of player welfare as well that we don't get into a replay structure because if we did, you'd be looking at replays in the middle of the week and then out the following week. So that just wouldn't really work in terms of player welfare. And I think it's in all our interest that we know that the actual time frame and the dates that we've set out will actually be able to be adhered to. This is clearly a positive day because, you know, not so long ago, the prospect of any GA matches at all this year looked somewhat distant. But I suppose it's important to point out that the situation is still a fluid one and we're 17 weeks away from the start of inter-county action. Absolutely. I mean, if you go back to 17 weeks ago, we probably weren't even entering into this pandemic situation and we're 17 weeks away from the actual start of the inter-county. A lot can change in that and we have to be flexible and very observant as to what's going on in the actual background. But I would encourage our player population, those between 20 and 35, who socialise probably will increase back to somewhat where they were, to just be careful because it's them that will be playing the games and it's them in the social scene that may become a problem with regard to this pandemic going forward.